This recording is part of the Metasploitable Without Metasploit video series from OverflowSecurity.com. Let's start out by doing a port scan on the Metasploitable box. You can see here that port 8081 is running Tomcat, and that is the service we are going to go after today. So to start with that, why don't we hit the Tomcat service with weasel from our Cali box so you can see here we have the Tomcat um, 5.5 page over here you can see we have the Tomcat administration and Tomcat manager let's browse to those and see what we find so here's the Tomcat administration tool, and here's the manager. Now if you've done Metasploitable with Metasploit, you know that the manager is prone to a, uh, a vulnerable um, war file upload that allows you to basically upload a malicious um, Tomcat extension and utilize that to get a shell back on the box. So let's try um, the default credentials for Tomcat, which is Tomcat and Tomcat. And as you can see, we do have access to the Tomcat manager portal page. Down here where it says war file to deploy, this is where we're going to be interested in uh, right this second. So let's go back to our terminal and we're going to actually generate a war file that we can use with MSF payload. So I'll walk you through this while it's generating. So we tell MSF Payload that we want to use a x86 reverse shell. This is the target IP for the shell, which is my Cali box. This is the port that I want it to connect back on, and the name that I want it to give the new war file. So if we do an LS now, you can see here that we have a myshell.war file. Let's extract that because we need this file name here in order to upload and use our new shell we need to know what the extension what the file name that we want to call once we get into the into the application is and Metasploit automatically generates this file so the easiest thing to do is to extract the war file find the name of it and then we're able to go over here and we can actually upload our war file and you can see here that my shell is now deployed so you can see in our title bar or in our address bar that we are hitting port 8081 my shell and we're actually going to paste in the JSP file name that was randomly generated by Metasploit and all we need to do now that we have that is start up a netcat listener on port 4444 send our shell and you can see that we now have a shell as Tomcat. So the next thing that we need to do is get that shell ele elevated to root privileges on this box. So let's start the process for doing that. I'm actually going to open up another terminal and let's make sure that I have the file I want in there and I don't so I'm going to go into my tools directory and we want linuxprivchecker.py which is a great tool uh, and I'm going to show you how it works here in a second. I'm going to copy it into my web root and we're going to start Apache. Now that Apache is running, we're going to go over to the Metasploitable shell we have. I'll hop into the temp directory and we're going to download Linux Priv Checker, and then we're just going to call on it real quick. 
<coughs> and it's going to run through a list of different things. So it is just a Python script, but basically it runs through common uh, methods of, of privilege escalation and basically just dumps anything that it can possibly find that might be useful in, in the process of escalating to root. So one of the parts of it that I use the most, and it's kind of the go-to when you first run the tool, all the way at the bottom here, it actually will tell you um, what exploits rank highest as possible candidates to escalate privileges on this box. And then it also gives you some maybe less likely ones, but ones that may also work. So let's take a look right here at the first one. And if I highlight this, copy it, we'll just head over to a browser here on my Mac. So this is the UDEV local privilege escalation vulnerability, which actually is quite popular and it usually does work if the system, if usually if it's listed, you can get this exploit to work. So um, what we're going to do is download a copy of that to our target machine. And I should actually be able to just W get the file because I believe this box does have access to the internet. So what I'm going to do is copy the link address, go over to our shell, and we're going to wget that file. And it doesn't look like that worked because we actually got. So um, all I'm going to do in that case is here, grab the URL, pop into Ice Weasel, I'll download a copy, and then on my box here, I'm just going to move the 8572.c into var www. I'm going to go into var www and I'm actually going to compile it right now. So we're going to gcc 8572.c and I always output the file name and drop the C so that I remember what the exploit was. You need to be careful doing that with some exploits because some of them are dependent on the name being being what's written in the code. Some of them have pointers to the name. So if that's the case, you either need to modify the code or make sure that you rename the exploit to what it's looking for before after compiling it or before compiling it in your output you want to put the name that it requests so now that it's uploaded I mean now that it's compiled let's w get it on our box here And now you can see we do have the file uploaded to the box. We're going to chmod the file so that it's executable. And let's pop back over to the article and see what the requirements for this are. So if you look down here, there's usually comments in well-written exploits that will explain to you what you need to do. So in this one it says, pass the PID of udevd netlink socket listed in procnet netlink. Usually this is the udev d pid minus one as argument one. So this application, this exploit looks for one argument, and it that one argument is the pid listed in procnet netlink minus one. Usually is what it says, and it also says this exploit will execute slash temp run as root. Throw whatever payload you want in there. So let's create the run file here. I've got the commands already put into a um, text document. So we're just going to echo bin um, sh to show that it's a shell script. And then we're going to echo the full path to netcat. We're going to tell it to listen on port 4447. And we're going to tell it to bind a shell to that port. So let's go ahead and paste that right into our shell that we're running as tomcat and now let's cat run and you can see now that 
the shell script is there for run which is what our exploit required now if we go back to that exploit we can see that it said that we want the PID that's in net proc net net link minus one so let's go back over to here and cat slash proc slash net slash netlink and it's 2999 is the PID as you can see here so we want to try 2998 so let's do dot slash 8572 2998 now let's see if we have a listener and we don't so the other thing we need to try because it says if you look closely here usually the PID minus one so let's try it with the PID the way it was which was 2999 so dot slash 8572 2999 netstat-antp and now you can see we have a listener on port 4447 so if I go over here and I netcat 2172.16.28.248 on 4447 you can see we now have a root shell on Metasploitable. That concludes this episode of the Metasploitable without Metasploit series from OverflowSecurity.com. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Send any feedback to feedback at OverflowSecurity.com or leave us a feedback in the comment and let us know what you think.